Hello everybody, today I have a special treat for you all because at the time of me releasing this video, it will have been exactly 100 years since World War I ended, the war to end all wars, which didn't necessarily do that. It caused the deaths of the German, Austro-Hungarian, and Ottoman empires. It proceeded to free the peoples of Poland, which then eventually caused the short freedom of the Baltic people. It set up the stage for fascism in Germany and Italy, which eventually spread into Romania and Bulgaria and Hungary. So the ties of communism and the Cold War that would occur years later. All in all, World War I was the most important event in modern history. So what if the war ended in stalemate? What I wanted to see was one of the most famous events of the war, the Christmas Truths, where both sides had set aside their differences and met in the middle of no man's land to celebrate Christmas with each other, to see what if World War I ended because of the Christmas Truths. To make this scenario occur, we'll do two things. First, we'll make the officers in the trenches and much of the higher command succumb to Christmas feelings. This causes more of the trenches to be ineffective, and the Christmas truths could last longer due to the officers not enforcing fighting. If we boost that to an extreme amount, even some generals, yes, generals, considering peace, this could be catastrophic for both sides. The truths can happen at this point, but we just need one power to enter it. And here comes Britain. Britain wasn't that heavily involved until the Entente side compared to the French. Britain's homeland wasn't being invaded after all. They only answered because of Belgium, so the British High Command started to say, You know what? We're done. And you'll all follow us, because this is stupid. And with that, Britain lobbied for an armistice. The Brits could easily give this armistice a chance in France and Germany. France, for the obvious reason that they were allies, and Germany because a lot of the soldiers in high command felt a brotherhood amongst each other now because of the truths. And so the Western Front was disestablished, and so was the Eastern Front. I would suspect Germany would force Austria's hand into signing a deal because the Austrians depended on Germany a lot, so the full Eastern Front is disestablished. Now of course, this could cause a ripple effect for for the entire world, what would happen? Well, this gives us multiple paths. I, however, will choose the optimistic choice of the realistic bunch. We'll be going over the major powers of the war. Britain, France, Germany, Russia, and Austria-Hungary. First up, Britain. Britain leaving the war will be in much of the same state it entered. However, Britain now assumes power as a dominant force in Europe. Through the family ties between Germany and Russia, Britain can lead the group of the three monarchs to avoid war. These three powers can affect the other nations, with Britain being allied to France, Germany influences Austria, and Russia to Serbia, which isn't a major nation, but it did cause the war. Britain establishes the European League, which is different to the League of Nations, but it sticks to Europe and definitely benefits imperialism. Next up is France. France is in a peculiar situation. They wanted Alsace-Lorraine, obviously, but they didn't get it. Through the European League, France and Britain offer an idea to Germany. Germany changes the title of Alsace-Lorraine from an imperial territory to a kingdom. Germany has the majority of monarchical state governments. And the king, not a German, but a French king. Jean III of Orleans. And with pressure from Britain, Germany accepts. But as modern times form, so do modern ideologies. And the Action Francaise starts to become popular amongst the socialists. The Action Francaise weren't fascists from the start, but realizing to get votes they would have to appeal to socialists, they switch over to fascism backing Jean III of Orleans for political positions, and secretly to assume the title as monarch. One 1931 election, the Democratic Party is realizing that Jean III was most likely going to win, they break the election. The French populists find out about this, and the Action Francaise proceed to overthrow the government and establish Jean III as the new king. Immediately, Britain and Germany are concerned. Britain's concerned because the Action Francaise is anti-imperialism, and Germany's concerned because Jean III is also the king of alsace lorraine giving him the claim to the land. To fix all these problems, Britain and Germany force a deal upon the French, threatening intervention, because one and intervention were totally different, if they didn't sign. The deal entails that France will establish a constitutional monarchy, and that all claims on German land shall be nullified, as well as establishing Princess Marguerite as the new queen Queen of alsace reign France reluctantly signs it, and they continue to steadily prosper. Next up, Germany. Germany leaving the war was conflicted. They felt as though they had won, but in reality, had they? The army had openly mutinied, and as the saying goes, while most states have an army, the Prussian army has a state. And if that said army was rebellious, openly disobeying the Kaiser, would a revolution occur? The Kaiser of Germany, Wilhelm II, 
worried over this thoroughly. He worried himself so much, he started to make drastic political reforms, realizing that he could be overthrown. These reforms, however, didn't loosen their grip, establishing a more constitutional government. No. They tightened it. Wilhelm III, the Kaiser's son, didn't like this new Germany. He openly declared he would have no part of the new German government. This caused Wilhelm II to move his line of succession to a person whom he known could help him, who would rule like him and make sure no rebellion sprout up. Victoria Louise. She became Kaiser and Victoria Louise the first von Hohenzollern, and she continued the tightening of Wilhelm II's metaphorical grip over Germany. But the populace didn't care so much. They prospered under the new Kaiser. Next up is the big boy, Russia. Russia is a wild card. The Russian populace, without the victory of the Tsar from the war, is angry, and they demand representation. And now Nicholas II's cousins, well, um, he's not dead yet, and George, push for him to give up power to the Duma, and to make a true constitutional monarchy. Nicholas, realizing it doesn't have a good connotation with his name, decides to take it one step further. He makes the Russian monarch a figurehead, sort of like the British monarch today, and then he abdicates. Yeah, you got that right. He abdicates because he realizes to truly enter Russia until modern age, and for Russia to modernize, he would have to get rid of the only thing keeping it out of it himself. His son, Alexei, would have only been 12 at the time, and his eldest child, Olga, was 23, and a woman. His brother, Michael, then became the emperor of a progressive Russia. And finally, we got Austria-Hungary. There we have Franz Josef, who realized that nationalism was going to be a problem, because that resulted in what could have been the most catastrophic war in history. So we decided to do what any sensible monarch of Austria would do established the United States of Austria. However, I much prefer the Kaiserreich the Nubian Federation, and this ends the nationalism problem in Austria for the most part, and Austria prospers as well. All in all, this was a somewhat realistic ending for uh, Europe, right? I mean, not Serbia, because they get nothing, and the Ottomans, well, die. It's not too bad. Let's hope so. Thank you for watching the video. If you follow me on Twitter, hint hint, you would know that I had passed out during editing. I was intending to release this five hours earlier on the exact time of World War One's ending. It turns out my body can handle that much work and decided, hey, let's go unconscious right now. And then I woke up and I was like, wait, what? And then I realized, oh wait, I passed out. And I started getting angry at myself around the Germany uh, paragraph area, so if it sounds like there's a drastic change in the tone of my voice at the start of the Germany thing, that's because I just woke up from from being passed out, and I was pretty angry because I had, so yeah, bye. Also, I would like to thank Embrace Historia for the British accent and voice, because I cannot do an accent, and I was not willing to embarrass myself, so check out his channel in the description below, it makes really good videos. <laughs> Als Weiser steht er in des Ruhmes Glanz, Liebe windet, nur wer reise ihm zu.